In this video, we're going to do some exam style questions on simultaneous equations. This is question number 8. We're told the graphs of x squared plus y squared equals 36 and 2x squared plus y squared equals 45 are shown below. The graphs intersect at the points A, B, C and D. So here's A, there's B, there's C and there's D. We need to find the area of a rectangle A, B, C, D given our answer in exact form. So we can find the coordinates of these points of intersections by setting up and solving simultaneous equations. So I'm going to write 2x squared plus y squared is equal to 45. That's going to be equation 1. And then we've got x squared plus y squared is equal to 36. And that will be equation 2. These work quite nicely because we've got a y squared term in each that we can eliminate. All I'm going to do here is 1 minus 2. 2x two squared minus x squared is just x squared. y squared minus y squared is 0. 45 subtract 36 is 9. Square root of both sides, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. So x is equal to plus or minus 3. So when x is equal to positive 3, so when x is equal to 3, substituting in, we're going to have now 3 squared, which is 9, plus y squared is equal to 36. I've simply substituted x is equal to 3 into equation 2. Subtracting 9 from both sides, x, uh, y squared is equal to 27. Taking the square root, y is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 27, which in exact form we can write as plus or minus 3 root 3. So that's when x is equal to positive 3. When x is equal to negative 3, we will see exactly the same. Substituting in negative 3 squared is 9, plus y squared is equal to the 36. y squared is equal to 27, so y is going to be equal to plus or minus 3 root 3. OK, let's label this up. So we've got the x-coordinate here of 3 and the x-coordinate here of 3. So this is going to be 3, this is going to be 3 x-coordinate here of negative 3, x-coordinate here of negative 3. This is going to be now the positive 3 root 3 y-coordinate. This is going to be the negative 3 root 3 y-coordinate. So that's that one catered for. x is negative 3, we're going to have again positive 3 root 3, and then we're going to have now negative 3 root 3. So all I'm going to do here is just quickly draw a little rectangle. You certainly don't need this, uh, but it might help you out. What we have here is this length, and that length is simply going to be the difference in the x-coordinates. So 3 subtract negative 3 is going to give me 6. If we look, we've got 3 root 3, and we subtract negative 3 root 3. That's going to be 6 root 3. So we can say on this now that the area... So the area will be equal to the length times by the width. So it'll be 6 multiplied by 6 root 3, which in exact form is going to be 36 root 3. And that is going to be units squared. So nice and logical, nice and straightforward. We solve simultaneous equations. We consider which coordinates go where and then answer a question that's in context or an application of OK, question 9. The dimensions of a rectangular room are y plus 1 and x, where y is greater than x, as shown in the diagram below. Given that the area of a room is 28 metres squared and the perimeter of a room is 22 metres, find the length of the diagonals of a room, given your answers in exact form. So what we're going to do is look at setting up and solving these simultaneous equations. So if we look at the area, an expression for the area, and I'll just write this on, an expression for the area is going to be the length multiplied by the width. So equation 1, we're going to have x multiplied by y plus 1. That's the length times by the width, and that's going to be equal to 28. If we consider the perimeter, what we're going to have then is all of the side lengths added. So it's going to be sides added. So what I could do is write for equation 2 that x plus x plus y plus 1 plus y plus 1 is 22. Or I could simply put that x plus y plus 1 is going to be equal to half of the perimeter, which is 11. So that leaves me now that x plus y 
is going to be equal to 10. So that is equation 2, that is equation 1. Now if we consider here, we could go ahead and rewrite this. What I'm looking to do is substitute that into equation number 1. This is our nonlinear, this is our linear. So I'm going to say that y is going to be equal to 10 minus x and substitute it. So what we're going to have then, equation 1 is going to be x. Now if this is going to be 10 plus 1, which is 11, and then we're going to have minus x. So that has just gone in to here. And that's going to be equal to 28. So we've got 11x minus x squared is equal to 28. We can do a little rearranging, setting the left-hand side to 0. x squared minus 11x plus 28 is 0. That looks like it's going to factor x minus 7. And then we're going to have x minus 4. So we can see from here that x will be equal to 7, or we've got x is equal to 4. So let's now consider the y coordinates. On this one just here, if y is equal to 10 minus x, then on this one, 10 minus 7 is going to be 3. And on this one, we're going to have 10 minus 4, which is going to be 6. Now, we're told y is bigger than x, so we can say that it isn't this one, and it's this one, as now y is greater than x. Uh, y is greater than x, it's certainly greater than 0, we'd uh, hope it is. Let's put this on. y is going to be greater than x. So y is greater than x. So what we've got here now is the following. We can see, and if I just put up these dimensions, let's just draw this on. We've got a rectangle, and rough sketch. Uh, I'll put them on the bottom because I think the next part of the question is easy if we see them. Um, if we've got x is equal to 4, so I'll put 4 just here. And then we've got y is 6, so this is going to be 7. That is what we want. Now, we want the length of the diagonals in exact form. All we need here is Pythagoras' theorem. So we're simply going to look at that length right there. And we can say now that, and I'll just call this d, D is going to be equal to the square root of 7 squared plus now the 4 squared. So we can see that this is going to be the square root of 49 plus now the 16. And on that, we can see now that that is going to be the square root of 65. So that is in exact form. Uh, that won't break down. It's 13 times by 5, and we can see that from these anyhow. Um, but that is what we're going to end up getting. So the square root of 65 is the exact length of the diagonal of that rectangle. So we solved a, a set of simultaneous equations. One is linear, one is nonlinear, considered which one is valid, and then gone ahead and simply plugged in the numbers to solve.